everybody. Welcome to Our Mom Critiques Wild Bow, a proud member of the Doof Network. In this podcast, my sister and I force our mother to read Pale, Wild Bow's least gory work. I'm Jenny, and Malia convinced me to read Worm. I'm Malia, and Jenny convinced me to read everything else. And I'm their mom, and the girls got me hooked on this book. This episode, we are covering the first half of Arc 2, Stolen Away. I also hear myself echo. Echo! Does anyone I else mean, hear it? No. I can't. Okay. Sucks to be you. I'll just... Yeah. That is the most <laughs> annoying thing ever. Well, um, if I talk like yeah. this, it's okay. If okay. I talk like this, then you get a no, weird accent. Okay. Accent. Hmm. All right. That made me want to share with the world my quote that I oh, shared God. with you guys that I heard. Oh, I'm scared. Don't you remember that? So, no. everyone, um, <laughs> I was shopping... Um, the other day looking for craft supplies and I overheard um, a lovely southern woman uh, say something along the lines of um, what was it? And she just popped out two babies like a Pez dispenser. <laughs> yeah. Love it. And she just, home, and she kept just being like, like a Pez dispenser. And now she's got two and it was just like, oh my I've never heard uh, yeah, it was lovely. Uh, um, anyone who doesn't have Pez dispensers, I, I don't know how common they are in other countries, but it's this lovely little toy thing that uh, you put the candy Pez, which is like, I don't know. Compressed sugar? Pretty much compressed sugar. Um, it's <laughs> delightful. Um, and then you just like lift up the little like figurine's head and it pops a little Pez out of its mouth. It's pretty cool. So mm-hmm. It's yeah, pretty cool. Um, never them. looked at one of those and thought that looks like a baby coming out. <laughs> but, <laughs> you know, I guess some people uh. see things differently. <laughs> um, all right. And with that, we're going to go into our summary of chapters. So we'll start with 2.1. Uh, the trio discusses Gabe's disappearance and meets another participant of the ritual. They go to the library. Avery almost gets tricked by the choir. In 2.1 Extra, we get to see Lucy's notes on the Carmine Beast, Charles, John, and the Hungry Choir. In 2.2, the trio interview... I can't speak. The trio interview the fairy, and it is a hot mess. Marissa showers them with gifts and then turns Rona into... We find out what in 2.3 is a ferret, which is coaxed out of the bushes while Lucy yells at Marissica. And instead of learning their lesson and staying away from the fairy, Avery and Lucy decide to return that night and play some more with Glamour. Um, Avery kisses Pam while disguised as a boy and has mixed feelings about it. I just have to say, I like rewrote that sentence to perfectly be like, and then turns Rona into... And then you just have to be the ferret is coaxed out of the bushes. Um, right, I wrote but I had just to like say that. which which in two point three. Yeah, I mean, I, I guess. I but Sorry. I'm just saying it like kind of messed up my groove. Technically, it was my groove, but I'm sorry. Well, no, because I changed it. <laughs> I changed the. I I fixed the groove, and then you broke the groove. So that's you threw fine. Off it, the groove. You threw off the groove. <laughs> <laughs> it's the best Disney movie of all time. Yes, it I is. I don't even care. Anyway. <laughs> it's it's amazing. Um, 2.3 extra um, materials. Some of uh, Verona's spell notes. Also instructions for the forest ribbon trail. Uh, in 2.4, Lucy's aunt Heather comes by for a visit. Despite the extra emotional support, Lucy later yells at Avery and Verona for not taking things seriously enough. That night while out with Avery... Lucy decides to let loose by taking out some of her anger on Paul and Paul's car. Yes. 2.5. Um, Avery thinks about what Lucy said and then goes over to Verona's house where she is super weirded out. The trio head over to interview Alpiana. Uh, Verona prevents Alpi from giving her dad a nightmare and they run off to investigate some damaged echoes. And then finally, um, the 2.5 extra materials is a big list of all the gifts the trio has collected from the Kennet others. So, right. Mom, um, oh, I guess boy. before okay. we get into the questions written down, just kind of overview, how did you like this section of the story? I like I know this it's one because... It's been a little bit since you read it, but... I know, because, yeah, we've had interruptions. But, yeah, I like this one because I feel like 
I don't have to try so hard to remember these characters and who's the deer and who's the what, you know, I mean, at the beginning, I, um, there was too much information and now Mm -hmm. I'm getting to know the characters. So it's a little more fun to read. And I, and, you know, obviously I don't have to just be all freaked out about this um, chapter coming up. That's so horrible because nobody's Mm -hmm. told me about anything in the future that I'm going to just you know, hate because it's everybody dies. Yeah. So, <laughs> yeah. I'm not saying that's not going to happen, but at least you guys haven't told me. That's good. Yeah, freaked you out yet. Yeah. Right. Well, yet. it's still not done. So we might start oh, telling boy. you eventually. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> uh, True. Uh, is there any part um, of like any one of these chapters that stands out to you the most or? You you can't ask me extra questions. I can do that what you I didn't want. Tell me, because <laughs> then I have to look at notes. Okay, what stands out? Um, probably. Well, let me think. What I really liked, probably Paul. <laughs> I was wondering who Paul <laughs> Sorry, was. That's the way you said that. Like, let me think about what I really liked. Paul. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm sorry, but that you know you said stands out. Okay, so that yes. um cuz I remember you know how once in a while I get lost in this book and so I was reading it and I then they made some reference to Paul and so right then I texted Malia and I said, "Am I supposed to know who Paul is? Who's Paul?" And she goes, "I don't think you're supposed to know yet." So I was fine. I'm like, "Okay." And then when the, right after that it was like, "Oh, this is Paul." And poor Paul, the, you know, and his car and all that. Anyway, I mean, that was that was fun. <laughs> it was fun. <laughs> yes. We're going to talk more about Paul okay. later. <laughs> all right. Well, should we get into some of these questions, I guess? Yes, please. <laughs> all right. First question. Um, what do you think about Verona's tendency to have what Lucy calls dumbs and shutdowns? How do you think Verona struggles with processing emotion um, will play into the story? Okay. Um, yeah, she does sh- shut down. I'm just thinking it's because of stress or possibly it's her personality. Um, I do think it's going to get her into trouble because she's not as aware of mm. what's happening and things around her. But I think it's a coping mechanism for her. You know, she has to kind of shut down to get through the stuff that she's dealing with in her life. So she just, you know, sh- shut some of it out. Okay. Is there anyone like in your life you can think of or like you've had to, or you've known someone like this or you've had to deal with someone like this? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm curious what, um, cause Lucy seems to have really identified this phenomenon with her friend and she, um, like what advice would you give to Lucy about Verona shutting down like this? Cause she seems to like kind of deal with it, but do you think she could do anything better or what do you, what would you do if you knew Verona? I guess, I, I guess really Lucy as a good friend should just try to get her to talk about it a little bit. And I think hmm. she does try to do that, but I, that's all I can think of. Verona needs to, get a reality check and think a little bit about the things happening to her and what that can mean and the trouble it could get her in, you know, to be a ferret that, you know, maybe she won't put, maybe she, she won't pop back into her real self, you know, or whatever. So I, that's all I can think of is to get her to um, talk about it so that she thinks of it as being real a little bit. It's kind of random, but just because we're talking about ferrets, uh that is the one animal that like my husband has said like we cannot get as a pet why not that's really interesting (laughs) why because he used to work at a pet store and apparently they're disgusting like they're really gross are really gross and smelly (laughs) and they're just like really (laughs) nasty um wow good to know which is good to know Yeah. yeah um apparently fox foxes also smell really bad well, wow. I mean, he did, he doesn't know that. I just read that online, which of course <laughs> means it's true. Um, but you know what else smells really bad is sharks. What? I'm serious. Dad used to go fishing. If you'd hook a shark somehow, you know, little baby shark, they stink up the whole boat. It's disgusting. So there. 
You know, I think that you should they Google brought it. a... I think... I remember in fifth grade in Miss Gaston's class, um, one of her friends or somebody she knew like like caught a baby hammerhead uh, uh-huh. end up dying and they brought brought it in, which is really interesting as a fifth grader. Um, but oh, yeah, she it must did have smell really friends. bad. Yeah, yeah see? Miss Gaston, she's a... She's a character. Um, she was a character, yeah. That that did smell really terrible. Now that, yeah. that I'm thinking back on it. Not to mention it was really sad because it's a little baby hammerhead. Oh. It just looked but Don't cry, Malia. So They're so cute. Um, <laughs> hammerhead sharks? No. Yeah. Little babies. No, they're just well. Yeah, no. Jenny, tell them about the um the animals you rescued this week, because that's pretty cool. Ah, uh, so side story. Um, I have to tell you guys, just as a disclaimer, tr- don't do this unless like you have no choice. Um, <laughs> but so I was basically I was at the 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 park with my son, um, and we were playing on some of the equipment um, and wandering around, and I saw a little baby squirrel um, that had fallen out of the tree, and it was um, laying on. Uh, this bench right by the tree. I guess it, I'm guessing it fell right onto the bench. Unfortunately, it was having some bleeding. Um, so it didn't look that good. We called animal control or I called animal control, um, just because I didn't know who else to call to be frank. Um, and they came over and picked up the little squirrel. Um, don't know what happened to it, unfortunately, but basically about 10 minutes after that guy left, another baby squirrel fell out of the tree, um, onto that ground um and so i decided like i'm gonna pick this guy up because there's like a red ant infest and like infestation um and they're gonna eat this poor little guy um and then about 10 minutes after that another squirrel fell out of the tree (laughs) um so now i've got these two baby squirrels and (laughs) call animal (laughs) control again just to be like i know you guys literally just came but (laughs) two more baby squirrels fell out of the tree (laughs) um and they didn't end up showing up. I guess they got busy with some stuff. Um, my husband thinks that's a good thing because he's convinced that um, they would have been put to sleep or something. I don't know if that's true. Um, but I was also like, you know, I don't really... I tried to wait a while um, for the mama squirrel to at least come down and make some... I don't know. seem Give me some indication that she knows that they're, that they're babies. Um, but... Um, she did not. I would have left them there longer, except that there are fire ants everywhere and I didn't want them to get eaten alive. Not to mention, I'm not a squirrel expert, but you'd think three baby squirrels falling out of their nest is probably not an accident. <laughs> so mm. it almost made me think maybe the mom was like rejected them or something and was like dumping the squirrels so out. Sad. Which is really sad. Um, so I decided to uh, rescue the squirrels. So I've got two baby squirrels um, at my house <laughs> that I've been, uh, uh, taking care of for alive. a week. They're still alive. They're still alive. They look pretty good so far. I did mean, you name still... them, did you name them yet, or does the audience need to help with that? Oh, that's an <laughs> interesting question. <'Cause... laughs> <laughs> well, you all still have them by the time this episode comes out. That's true. Um, got one boy and one girl. Um, oh. I don't know if my oh. husband will let me name both of them via audience poll but we can always try so (laughs) you guys have any baby squirrel names for a boy and or a girl um or gender neutral i don't care um feel free to let me know and i will proceed to i don't know still i have my right to not go by that poll whatsoever (laughs) and to name them whatever i want but i'd still like to hear your input (laughs) Oh, this would be good. Spirit. Your That's audience is amazing. Yeah. Oh okay. yeah. I mean, <laughs> yeah. Just don't be offended if I don't pick your name, or if uh, you know, I just I do what I want. <laughs> <laughs> but no, I mean, I, th- I actually we've been kind of talking about it a little bit, so it would be good to have a little bit of inspiration in terms of names. But I don't know. Yeah, I think that the closest animal rehab center is in Austin, as far as I know, which is a little further than I, than I want to be driving right now, um, because I'm going to have a baby sometime. And um, Yeah, like a pest dispenser, right? 
jeez. <laughs> oh, <laughs> it's ready to pop out. How did what, she what say you... it again? <laughs> like a. She just popped those two babies out like a Pez dispenser. Yeah. Okay, so, Jen. Let, if you had a pregnancy Pez dispenser, would it be the belly you're lifting up? Mm. Let's, uh, let's yes. not go there. Uh, <laughs> oh, oh I, I, there's so many answers coming to my mind that are so wrong. So no, <laughs> just stop. Let's move on. <laughs> All right. Okay. So, um, kind of changing tracks a little bit. Um, I wanted to know more about what you thought about the hungry choir. Cause we just can't stop with the hungry choir. Um, and we meet Reagan in the first chapter of, or we see her again after the ritual. Um, and we learn about her reasons for doing this ritual. And we learn about Collins's reasons for doing this ritual. The guy that um, Gabe thought was a drug addict who died. Um, and I was curious as to what you think about this sort of thing. Like, does this make it a little bit more understandable as for, to why people go through this ritual in the first place? Would you be tempted maybe if you had some of these um, issues? I'd say, well, if you, if you had a clue about the hungry choir and no, <laughs> yeah, no, <laughs> that they're, they're, nuts and evil and you don't want to go near those those little <clears throat> you know those little smelly waifs. yucky kids yeah, wa- yeah waifs is that what they are yeah no they're spooky so um but yeah i guess i was wondering you know how they got in there and i thought they didn't really choose to be there but then reading back on it i realized one of them had like severe severe food allergies and the others could the other couldn't exp- couldn't afford the medication, so I think they were really stuck. So that's why they mm. were tempted to just give something a try because they. But still, I don't like that choir, man. Yeah, I just have to ask this just because it came to my brain, and I know you guys are going to roll your eyes. But if you had to design a hungry choir Pez dispenser, what would it look like? No. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it would look like a little mangled kid with like really wide eyes, and it would be like, ah, and it would be like bloody and stuff, and like yeah, it would have when you'd open its teeth. mouth, yeah, it would blood like around the little thing Pez that would opens pop out, right? I mean, I'm not gonna lie for Halloween, like a zombie Pez dispenser thing it would be pretty like pretty wild. <laughs> I, they tend to market them to little kids, though, so it'd be too scary, but that could be cool. All right, I'll drop the Pez dispenser for now. <laughs> I know you guys are all thinking about it. Yeah, fair enough. <laughs> Um, so for the hungry choir, mom, um, if you were doing the ritual, what animal would you want to show up and what animal would you really not want to show up? Oh, so that's really a fun question. Um, I think I'd like cows to show up because I love cows. (laughs) They're so sweet and lovable. Remember we had the cows next door and we would, uh, we would pick papayas for them and they'd come like hop. They're clumsily like no, they're- hobbling over really fast so that they could just stuff a whole papaya in their mouth and it would drip down the sides. And they yeah. were so, uh, they're just lovable. And you can they- look into their eyes. What? As you're no, chewing cows. into their flesh. <laughs> like I feel like we need to remind you, you're supposed to eat, eat the animal or like eat part of it. You have to like alive. fight it, subdue it and, eat part of it while it's still alive yeah, you guys are no fun i forgot about that <laughs> yeah i mean Darn, it just in so terms of like I a eat cute cow? animal i love cows i mean i guess i do eat cows now you're wrecking everything i'm like i have a nice hamburger see i like to be um ignorant about the food i eat and the steak i'm you know the Same. steak i'm cutting yeah, into I'm right and all yeah. that i don't want to think about it so there. Um, and yeah, okay, I've taken the cows back. Who do I want it to be? Um, <laughs> let's just make it. Um, what would I eat raw? Can I eat? Can I make it a um, like a fish? <gasps> yeah, I was gonna say what? Yeah, it's like a fish. That's pretty no, smart, honestly, actually. Yeah, I mean, let's poor have fish, some like... ah- ahi sashimi. That's awesome. No, ah, true. awesome. 
<laughs> Come on, Jenny likes it. So I'm saying that Ahi. I'm gonna I'm gonna want Ahi to show up, and we're gonna just slice them right there when they're just almost wiggly, and do some you know show you wasabi and have a feast. <laughs> Do you think it would yeah. like show up in like a little kiddie pool or something? I mean, that'd be way Definitely too small for a Ahi, pool. but no, no, that's you can do anything you want with this book. So yeah, it's a kiddie <laughs> pool. You can. That's the fun. Yeah. So do you think uh, like the hungry choir would be like surrounded like in swimsuits, ready to get into the kiddie pool, all menacingly? Or I love that picture. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, I like I like that. Except probably not swimsuits, probably cutoffs because they're kind of a mess, yes. you know, cut-off, just cutoffs <laughs> that have little Very holes honest. in them and and they've got strings hanging off them and all that stuff. They wouldn't be swimsuits. Hey, that's yeah. true. Yeah, oh, that's so great. That works. Would they have any floaties? Depending on how old they are, mm-hmm. or you think mm-hmm. so make them swim? Gen- the qu- your imagination. <laughs> it, I mean, really. I don't know. They don't have fun, though. They just, you know. Yeah, and I'm just, like, imagining, like, this, like, terrifying-looking little little kid with water wings. Just like, (laughs) (laughs) you know. I do kind of love that. Yeah. That's awesome. Uh, Oh, gosh. So so what would you not want to show up? Um, I have to say snakes. Snakes. Mm. I just, I don't know about, I, I don't, I'm not thinking about eating them, but if a bunch of snakes showed up, I'm out of there i i couldn't t- i couldn't do it because you guys know how i am no snakes yeah that'd be hard to eat something you're terrified of anyway even if you are thinking yeah. about eating uh, yeah uh, yeah i could probably eat a snake but i just don't want them slithering around yeah yeah i don't blame you for that it doesn't sound uh, i mean the whole yeah. ritual sounds like a bad time but like yeah, that sounds the especially ritual bad sounds pretty bad yeah <laughs> yeah <laughs> Yeah, mom. So I think last hungry choir ritual or question for now. Um, what do you think happens on someone's eighth night? Remember Reagan was talking about her friend and how she lost her eye and how eighth nights are different. What do you think that means? Um, and why did Reagan's friend give up even after Reagan gave her eye to him? Okay. So all I know is that it means something even worse than I've already you know i mean it's got to be yeah. bad 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 so that that i know and the choir is going to do its very best to make you fail um i don't know what happens if if you don't fail i mean did they let you go i i kind of doubt it i don't think i don't think you just they just say okay you did good you know you passed the test so you get to walk away i don't know and um her friend and the eyeball i mean did she have to eat the eyeball or something? I don't know. It's all horrible. I don't know. That would be the worst. Okay, I might have to quit too if I had to eat my friend's eyeball. I mean, that's. But yeah. if you went through seven nights of eating like bulls and Whew. bees and whatever the fuck, like you know, and you were that Could close, I swallow an you think eyeball? that's too bad? That's so so horrible. Wow. I did swallow a raw quail egg once. So, you know, <laughs> it was on a sushi. And so I, I was a, I was man enough to swallow the raw quail egg. So I think... You've uh, eaten I fish eyes I, before. Don't tell all my secrets. <laughs> I mean, it was a deer. I was camping with a Chinese guy. I so, went to a you know, restaurant to, with you and you ate oh, and you fish, eye. fish eye. Yeah. I don't remember that. So it's not that. even a one-time is that thing. Sam, Sam Choi's? Well, it's just never Ow. mind. They're really, really good, everybody. And if you could eat a fish eyeball, you could totally eat your friend's eyeball. If you were in the hot. I mean, you could. It's just a little bit bigger one to swallow. So, yeah, I'm down. I could do it. Because they sacrifice that anyway. You don't want them to, like pull their eyeball out and be like, here, I'm saving your life. And you're like, no, I quit. What, you jerk? I just pulled my eyeball out. That's right. I mean, the least you could do is eat it. So there. (laughs) I'm sticking with that. All right. Uh, I remember I had to do a dissection on a cow eyeball when I was in nursing school, which was really gross. sad. It is. What did you find? 
I mean, it works. You go I in don't there remember. and find the optic nerve. Okay. Yeah. I, I, yeah. I, they just like, yeah. I mean, it wasn't, I think like, yeah, they just basically were like, oh, these are the different parts of the eye and blah, blah, blah. But wow, yeah, it was a little, that's it was a little odd. Yeah. Yeah. I wouldn't want to eat it. But then again, no. you know, sometimes in life you got to do things you don't want to do. So, <laughs> and with that, uh, we're going to go to the next question. Uh, okay. <laughs> um, <laughs> Okay, so what do you think about the fairy now that you've met them? Okay, the fairy are sneaky, dishonest, and total trouble. Yeah, they're mean girls on steroids. I really, I really want to stay away from this fairy. And I really, I hate drama. I mean, just, <laughs> you know, and they're all into, that's all they are, little drama queens that are trying to, you know, that are better and prettier than everybody else and they're just trying to trip everybody up so no i would stay far away from them do you think that you could see the fairy like in actual like the actual movie mean girls (laughs) what did i say i said they're mean girls on steroids well can you rephrase that what are you talking about (laughs) you know the movie mean girls with like regina george and like so, if you replace yeah. the, them would Marissa fairy. could be, <laughs> yeah. Oh, if I replace them, <laughs> mm-hmm. oh yeah, they could make a really good movie with that. It would just be so much worse and kind of magical, you know. Like you just, it none of it would be like something that could actually happen. Hmm. Yeah, it would be all magic. No, it that'd be. It actually could be a good movie. Yeah. Could you think of like who Marissa would be, or no? To we don't know her well enough yet, or do you not remember the <sighs> Mean Girls protagonist enough? It's been a little bit since we've seen that together. I think. Yeah, it's been a long time. Okay. I think I remember. Yeah, I don't know. What do you think, Jen? Oh, I almost see Guillaume as being one of the main Mean Girls, <laughs> as opposed to. <laughs> I feel like just I I mean this is nothing against Guillaume. I just feel like he'd be able to play the role of Regina mm-hmm. George really well. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I also um this is mean mom but I thought of a question. Um I hate that. Yeah, well I'm curious about like the <laughs> gifts. You so we you could take some time to think about this or you can look at 2.5 extra materials, but I'm thinking like if if you could get one of these gifts which one would you want? <laughs> okay. I don't think I ever re- Oh, yeah. I kind of wrote a little bit down. Let me think. Um, I don't think I know the gifts. Can you can you read them to me? Yeah. Should we do just the fairy gifts or should we do any of the gifts? Let's do just the fairy gifts. Um, yeah, just do the fairy gifts for now. Okay. So um, it's basically Marissa is the one who's given... The gifts right and she was like three and three or whatever the fuck right um so she gave avery a way to challenge a ritual or dynamic like the hungry choir um also the ability to turn one type of object into something similar with glamour i think um and then she also gave avery uh the glamour to disguise to become someone else how to change glamour to shape your shape to change your shape and your face. Um, Lucy, the information she gave was that they were picked because they're more vulnerable to becoming other. She taught her how to use the nettle wisp glamour, which is like a counterattack charm. And then a different piece of glamour that we don't know yet. Um, and for Verona, she told her about a way to make a contract more theirs by weaving their style into it. Um, taught them how to create a false image and uh, how to change into an animal. Do any of those sound fun or do you just stay? Are any of these worth associating with fairy? Oh, yeah. A lot of them sound really <laughs> useful, right? They just, yeah. you know, that they're going to have um, strings attached. I guess um, I kind of like changing into an animal or changing an object into something similar. Hmm, um, okay. If you were going to change into an animal, which why one? would it be cow? Oh, no. <laughs> I, was thinking, I might change into a cow because I love cows. <laughs> oh. now, would you pick a cow oh. or what do you think you would pick? 
well, cows are too slow and kind of clumsy, you know, so, um, but maybe they would just think you're slow and clumsy and you'd mm. actually have superpowers, you yeah, know, because cows, cow. if you look through the cow's eyes, you can kind of see their soul. You can go, have you ever really looked in a cow's eyes? I mean, no. those guys are I think are only deep. when I was feeding a papaya. <laughs> Okay, yeah, they're <laughs> the next uh, yeah, they really have, you know, feelings and they're pretty cool. So I don't know. I I mean, that might not be the smartest answer, but that's what I'm going with. I, I think it. I'm going to turn into a cow cuz I love cows and um and that's mainly it. But see, nobody would expect a cow to be really super smart and witty and and so fast and they can jump over trees and stuff nobody would expect that but see i'm a magic jump over cow. trees that, that oh. would be you that's true you magic cow <laughs> i'm magic cow yeah i think it's funny i'm looking at like two questions down and it says if you had access to glamour would you transform yourself and it was like <laughs> and your answer is wouldn't touch it <laughs> Whereas I literally asked you two seconds ago, and you're like, "Yeah, that sounds fun." Uh, so, okay, how well, do you, gosh, justify yourself? I'm an enigma. Okay, that's what I'm going with. <laughs> it's a puzzle to even myself. Okay, you know. So, yeah, oh. I, yeah, that's it. I mean, that's you're not supposed a to read answer. ahead. I would have had a good answer once I got there. I would have changed it. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Um, what do you think about Avery changing into a boy and kissing Pam? Well, um, I think that in a way it's good that that happened because she she knows she doesn't want to be a boy, so she mm -hmm. did get that. But um, but the kiss was actually dishonest because it wasn't her. I mean, Pam mm -hmm, didn't mm -hmm. think that she was kissing um, Avery. Mm -hmm. And so um, I think that she's going to get in trouble for that because mm -hmm. you're not supposed to tell a lie. And, to, and it's not telling a lie, but it's kind of it's d definitely dishonest. And mm -hmm. so there's going to be trouble in my mind. And um, and now Pam sucked into it somehow. So that's kind of too bad. Mm -hmm. um, I'm not sure what's going to happen with her. Yeah. It makes for an interesting story, you know, in some mm -hmm. next chapter. <laughs> Do you think that this is something that, like, um, would be a common mistake if, like, kids had, or, like, if teenagers or middle schoolers had this ability? Do you think this would be something that was happening? <laughs> like, Oh, yeah, totally. I mean, wouldn't you guys do that? If you what else do you do when you're in middle school and stuff? You you're you're all that, you know, you might go to school, you know, school is all about, you know, your friends and the boys and and the whole the whole thing, you know, like who's talking to who at recess and all that stuff. So I would say, oh, yeah, it'd, it'd be a bunch of trouble. <laughs> fair malia touched on this question because she cheated and looked ahead <laughs> but um if you had access to glamour would you transform yourself if so into what of course i would <laughs> <laughs> who wouldn't yeah so i'll just say a really pretty cow like um Aww. brown and brown and cream colored spots mm -hmm. long eyelashes and um great abilities to you know leap over trees and um to run super fast and um probably a talking cow that would be fun too mm. yeah be like mr ed except mr ed except a cow what would right. you name what would your name be no no don't go what like instead of mr ed you know if you had a oh, name the cow yeah oh man your alter ego. Um, oh, that's such a that's a hard one. Um, I don't know. Like Miss this Bessie isn't a very or... good name, but I think I think she's it, it's a girl cow and she's got really long eyelashes. So I'll say Jaja because remember <laughs> after Jaja Gabor. I because love it. Do, do you remember that? Remember that show? Green was it Green Acres? Yeah, Green Acres. I do not remember the you show. Know, <laughs> me neither. I think this I is guess before it was us. A way before your time. So <laughs> yeah. Jaja Gabor, 
um, was uh, got fell in love with um, some guy I can't remember his name, and um, and he was he won a farm, you know. So she, of course she and she had mink coats and and the whole work. She was you know Miss Glamour Glamour Woman, and so she. In Green Acres, she went and lived on the farm. So she was there with the pigs and cows and all that stuff. But she always had her high heels and purses and um, mink coats. Oh, that's fun. And the, Yeah, it was fun. It's called Green Acres. So there. Huh. All right. So I'll be Jaja. Jaja the cow. <laughs> yep. Um, so mom, what do you think about Lucy's family? Particularly, I'm wondering, what do you think about Aunt Heather? Oh, um, yeah, Aunt, I don't know. I don't think I know enough about her. She seems genuinely to care about Lucy and to, um, to be pretty cool, you know, and, um, so I, I think she's good. Lucy needs more people like that in her life you know, that are a support to her. And so I like her. Yeah. She doesn't seem too smothering either. You know, she seems to let Lucy um, do what she needs to do, but to kind of keep an eye on her. So that's good. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Okay. Awesome. Um, do you agree with Lucy that Brona and Avery aren't pulling their full weight? And how do you think they could do better? Yeah, actually, I... I don't know. I was kind of surprised at all that. I think that Lucy's a little hard on them. I mean, everyone's got different battles at home and at school. Um, I do think it might have been a mistake to meet with the fairy without her, though. Because remember how you're really mm. supposed to do things with in threes, and then if you start doing things in twos, you might get more power, and what's that going to do to um, to Lucy? So I, I didn't mm. think that mm. would... I think they have to be careful with that, or she might get left behind. So I don't think they did it thinking of that, but I just, I remembered that. Okay. What do you, th- I mean, I feel like Lucy is taking things very seriously and that the other two, like they're, they're the detectives in a murder investigation and Verona got transformed into an animal and all this stuff. Like, don't you think she kind of has a point or do you think she just needs to relax and then things would go fine or whatever i don't i just i didn't really see it i think everybody's trying to do their part and okay and i i don't think anybody's really slacking personally Mm -hmm. but you know um sorry i have a hard time remembering whose turn it is but i think it's my turn it is um (laughs) so talking more about lucy um what do you think about paul and about lucy's reaction to seeing him for the first time since he left her mom Okay, this whole part was really intense, and I I really like this part, um, and I hope to see Paul again. I hope he comes back, <laughs> but not to punish him. I mean, I don't like that part. I don't want to see him, you know, his limbs being th- pulled off his body and little <laughs> monkeys chewing on him and stuff like that. You know, I mm-hmm. I don't need that. I just I just would like an explanation and maybe some kind of resolution, um, but. But then there, I remember a little bit that um, maybe he, you know, back pulled away and disappeared from this family because he's white and they're not. And um, that's just like, really, that's unbelievable. If he if that was the reason for it and having pressure from his family because of that and he pulled away, then he's really a coward and um, and racist. And I I really you know don't like him i hope i hope he gets you know in in some kind of trouble for that but i don't want him to be you know like i said i don't want the monkeys to go and eat him eat him alive or anything (laughs) that's fair um in terms of like i'm kind of curious what you think of lucy's reaction a little bit more um in terms of like um i don't know as a mom like if we had something like that happen to, or like, we had something like that um, to where me or Malia uh, confronted and uh, acted in a similar way, like towards someone that had hurt us or hurt you or hurt our family. I guess I'm kind of curious what your thought process would be. Yeah, I mean, I would, um, 
you'd probably be grounded. I would talk to you about, I mean, you, that, that's not a good way to react. It could, it could be dangerous to you. Plus you just don't do that to people's property and stuff. You don't lay their hand, you know, you don't do that kind of stuff. That's not right. She, Mm -hmm. she could definitely had a right. And I would encourage her to tell Paul how, he really screwed up her lo- her life and that he was a jerk and a coward. And, and I would try to um, like really not let him go until he told until he gave me some kind of explanation, even if it wasn't an exclamation, exclamation, explanation <laughs> that um, <laughs> and an exclamation too, that was um, <laughs> that I was satisfied with. Um, but mm-hmm. I think that he definitely owes her that, but no, you guys would be, in tr- in pretty big trouble. You don't do that kind of stuff. You know, mm. you gotta, you gotta step it up a little bit. And, um, even though it's probably pretty satisfying to do that. Yeah. I, I wouldn't want you to go that route. I guess I'm also thinking like, is it different thinking of us as like when we were 13 as well? Not in terms of like punishment differences, but like, would you be more concerned <laughs> as opposed to like, or would you be more concerned that me as a 31 year old would go and do that? <laughs> oh, jeez. Oh, I I would be more concerned if you did it now as a 31 year old. Yes. I would be I mean that would raise a lot of red flags at the, at 13. I was thinking of you at at 13, you know, when I gave that answer. So it was mm. like, no, I'd probably you'd probably be grounded. I'd talk to you about it. You know, um you we do, you know, and come up with something you know so that you could understand why you know you just it just you know you can't do that but if you did that yeah at 31 I oof (laughs) yeah I wouldn't know what to do I'd be totally calling therapists and stuff like that and (laughs) trying to get you in some place to be fair like therapy probably is a good uh option for for a 13 year old right oh yeah definitely yeah yeah. yeah, actually, I think that's one of the things that she would need. Yeah. Okay. What do you think about the fact that so it seems like Lucy doesn't know what happened to her mom and Paul. And I, I don't remember how old she was when he left. Exactly. I think she was like eight or something like that. But what do you think about the fact that she just like doesn't understand what happened and that no one's really told her? Um, How did she figure it out now, though? Or did she? She doesn't. She's, I mean, that's the thing. She's yelling at him about it. She doesn't know why. She doesn't no know. one's like actually sat her down and been like, okay, Lucy, this is exactly what happened and why. What do you think about the fact that she doesn't know? I don't like that. I mean, I think, uh, I think it's really hard as a person to have a significant thing happen to you and never know why. I think that's mm-hmm. really harmful. Yeah. And um, when I've had things like that happen to me, I can't let them go. You know, right. it's mm-hmm. really hard. And so I think that um, her mom did her a disservice. I really, you know, she thought she was protecting her, but she wasn't. She needed to um, tell her in, so, in some kind of a way that would be good for a 13 year old, you know, at the best way she could um, to tell her the truth and what happened. And this is something that happens in life and, um, and ha- kind of have a discussion about what are some ways, you know, this is really hard for me too. What are some ways that you and I can cope with this and mm-hmm. kind of just to, to discuss, cause 13, definitely they might, you know, Lucy might have some ideas as good as her mom and it might be just helpful to bounce it off of each other as, you know, there are people like this. We, we don't, you know, it's really sad because we loved him, but it's not a, he's not good to have in our life it's he's he's too much of a coward or whatever or what I don't know how you know how to do it but I do think that um you need to talk to your kids and have them be a part of the conversation Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. yeah one of the things I find really interesting about this story and the way that Wild Bo has like written Lucy um is that like she doesn't know 
Because like this could be about race, but it might not be. And I feel like there's a couple of things that maybe you haven't noticed yet. But I think there's some things that Lucy is asking herself, like, is this happening to me because I'm black and these people are kind of racist or is this happening or is it totally something else? And I think it's a really interesting way to like explore a black person living in a town where there are no other black people um, and thinking about like how justified is Lucy in these thoughts? Maybe it's super mm-hmm. justified. Maybe it's not totally justified, like, but also she doesn't know. And like, oh, okay. that's kind of a really fascinating, you know, because no one's coming up to her and being like, you're black and I hate you. Right. But she's experiencing things and being like, did this man leave my mom because we're black? I don't know, but maybe okay. but I don't know. And it's really interesting. Yeah, it is. Mm-hmm. I'm, I, I actually think. kind of, I don't know how I got this in my head, but I sort of like Paul. And I, I'm <laughs> hoping that maybe I just feel sorry for him. But I, but I, I'm kind it's of hoping that it's not a, a racist thing, that maybe he left because he was protecting them against something that maybe was hmm. wrong. You know, maybe he thought this would, if he ended hmm. up with them, you know, um, like got married and all that kind of stuff, that it's going to be more of a problem for them because they would have, um, you know, people would look at their family differently and he was just going to get out because he thought it was better for them, hmm. which is, I don't agree with, but I'm just, I'm just saying, I'm kind of thinking maybe it's something like that. It's kind of interesting because I just remember when I first read this part, I just like, I just thought he was so slimy and just like, <laughs> ugh, like, like screw you, Paul. I know, why do I like him? Who knows? I don't, I don't know, know, man. I don't but... know. I don't know. <laughs> I hope he's not slimy, but yeah. I guess I don't think that because they were a family for a long time, you know, they were, and Lucy's mom seems to have a good head on her shoulder and Lucy really liked him. So I'm thinking, no, he's legit. He's probably a good guy. And then as it got more and more serious, he did this thing to try to protect them. But it was really stupid. I mean, you don't just leave, you know. Like, I'm going to save I'm gonna save them by just disappearing and going out and getting a loaf of bread and not coming back again. Which okay. is something that sort of happened in our family. It pretty much did. I was wondering if you guys would remember that one. Oh, heck yeah. The loaf of bread, of course. Oh, you do? The loaf of bread? Okay, yeah. You might be so. Can you expand on that just a little yeah, more? Yeah, you have so. to tell now. It really? I thought maybe people would just always wonder. I mean, that so. could be it. Yeah, often, like I Lucy, guess, but... do you want to do this to them, Mom? Don't you think you deserve sitting them down and telling them about what really oh, happened? Okay. Yeah, okay, give them some closure. Okay. Oh, that's a low blow. Okay. <laughs> okay. So I have this grandpa that, um, yeah, I I have mixed feelings about um, <laughs> because my mom had a really close relationship and just loved him and all this. And apparently I think I was a baby. Well, yeah, it was with my grandma, I guess. So they had a really, they, they had a love hate relationship, you know, it was like a really passionate, we love each other so much or else we hate each other's guts kind of relationship. And um, so, but one day when they were um, having a really hard time, apparently my, grandpa went out to get a loaf of bread and he never came back for nine years so um when when (laughs) that's the truth that's the truth and then my mom finally found him through um there was no computers of course then she wrote letters to people with his name all over the country and tried to trace him not you know track him down by a social security number and um he finally came back and um and reunited with our family. And I didn't quite know what to think about him because I always thought he was kind of a lousy person to make my mom hurt so bad. I mean, how could you, I still kind of do, you know, how do you leave your kids and, and just go and you don't, you don't, you don't actually, that's, that's something unthinkable. So, but, um, but he did that. And then this is the other unthinkable thing was guess what? So, um, Two years after he came back, guess who got remarried? I know. <laughs> yeah, he and my grandma. Yeah, and that's happened a couple times in our family. It's kind of a family thing, too. 
um, to get divorced <laughs> and get remarried. So what my husband has a couple of times threatened to um, go out for a loaf, loaf of bread. And that's really me, you know, that makes me, you know, I'm like, please, no, not that. <laughs> so yeah. And, <laughs> yeah, I don't uh, let him do that. So that's the story. Oh yeah. Well, thank you for sharing, Mom. Sure. Yeah. <sighs> Jeez. So do you think that Paul uh, went out for a loaf of bread or something smaller because he hasn't because they've still seen him, obviously? So like, a, yeah, like a, no, it was. Yeah, like no, roll. he went out for a loaf of bread. Yeah, oh, he went out for, yeah, like he a, went out for a loaf of bread or hot dog buns or, or donuts or something, whatever it was. <laughs> I like the hot dog buns. <laughs> you do? I don't know. Okay, let's make it hot dog buns. But yeah, and then they just never saw him again, you know? So yeah, mm. every time she goes to you know a football game and gets a hot she really just can't get a hot dog anymore because it just makes her too depressed she kind of chokes on it so yeah he did that to her yeah, yeah it's sad it's pretty it's a dirt bag right there i don't know yeah <laughs> <laughs> all right um i don't remember whose turn it is but i'm gonna ask this anyway Wait, um, i just have to say you know i oh. i wonder if you're gonna call this episode you know, going out for hot dog buns, or if you're going to call it, um, Pez dispenser. You know, oh, Pez dispenser, definitely. <laughs> or else little waifs and cutoffs, you know, there's a lot of good ones. That, there's a lot of good title. ones this episode. Yeah. There was something you said earlier. Oh, no, no. I think, um, if you can eat a fish eyeball, you can eat your friend's eyeball. That right now is the lead contender. <laughs> well, we do have a lot of good ones in this. You know, that is a good one. I don't know. That's uh, going to be tough. That's going to be rough. Yeah. And we're only really about halfway one. through. Okay. Well, let's keep going. <laughs> All right. So um, what do you think of Verona's dad now that we've gotten a bit further into the story? Oh, my gosh. Okay. If I remember right, last time... I felt kind of sorry for him, right? I'm like, well, yeah. she needs to have some... Oh, my God. I can't stand him. And I was wondering when you get to this, he <laughs> broke her... Yeah, he broke her art supplies. I mean, that is the very worst. Destroying someone's property, especially something that's her passion. That, I just, mm -hmm. I couldn't stand that. And, um, yeah, he is the worst. And, um, and for him to... And what an immature little baby oh my gosh he's horrible so i it can't be good for um verona to live with him at all that's a really toxic environment and then he's thumping on the wall you know bam 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 he's horrible i don't know that's yeah. what i think of him he's yeah make yeah, some of what the audience was waiting for you to say <laughs> Oh, you think they were? Yeah. Because, oh, yeah. Um, no, yeah, last time I was like, well, she needs to understand, you know, that he he has it rough and maybe she could listen to him and mow the lawn a day earlier or something. Oh, no, he's horrible. Yeah. No, well, I would turn into coping. a ferret, too. But <laughs> I think it kind of put some of her coping mechanisms into more perspective, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, definitely. No, she's she's got a toxic... Yeah, actually, all their home lives are kind of rough. Yeah, I think Lucy's is pretty solid. Just the like, I mean, the single the mom best. thing is hard, but um, yeah. Oh yeah, her mom's cool, and um, her mom's Lucy's great. Is the best, but um, Avery, no way. <laughs> that house is crazy. But we didn't get to that yet. But still. <laughs> well we don't actually have a specific question about that so yeah please talk about avery's house or unless we do do we have a question about that i think we do um, let me see i don't think so no we don't oh, please was, talk about avery's house my, that was going to be one of my th three things so i'll just talk oh. about it because you can save no, it for I, the th i'll just it's okay let me save it yeah okay because okay. yeah we have to talk about that um okay and then finally mom We've met all of the Ken and Al others because we've officially met Alpi. And I was curious as to what was your impression of Alpi? <laughs> okay, now that's not fair because um, I, I thought he was a horse, okay? And She's I a bet girl not for the, the 18th time! Okay. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. Okay, I okay say it again, though. Let's horse. get a clean take. What did you think? 
I thought Alpie was a horse, and I'm not the only one. I'm not the and only I'm not one. The, how do you mean you're not the only one? I'm so not. The, okay, raise your hand out there in the audience. Be brave. Be brave. I want to hear who thought that Alpie was a horse. I know you're out there because she's called Mare, and so that's it. I thought a mare was a horse, okay? That's I'm fair. sticking I mean, with that's that. True. It's true. I see? think some of the packed readers might be chuckling at that, but I can't say why. This is so I, fun, not being able something. to say why. <laughs> really? You're doing the bread thing. I Okay. Yeah, what? you're doing the bread thing. Okay, no, you're going to find out whenever okay. we finally get through this podcast and you why, start listening to our podcast. Why she's really a horse or she's no, really not a horse? No, just why it's kind of funny that you thought that. Okay. Jen, do you know what I'm talking okay. about? Uh, I'm, it's not ringing a bell, but okay. I don't know. I've, so what else about Alpi? The whole like black so mom mom thought that this horse crawled up onto the ceiling and let black goop drip from its mouth onto verona's dad's face that's still the vision that i have in my head i can't get, <laughs> i can't I, I can't get away from that yeah that was kind of awful and i thought um, wow that was so is it like a miniature a horse because if you have a full-grown horse standing up from the ceiling there's not a lot of there's not room. a lot of room <laughs> Jen, why do you try to make sense out of this book? You can do anything you want. I mean, it could be a horse that's 10 times the size. You know, you guys have a beast that melted into the... I mean, I don't even know. But I mean, no, those are fair points. I, there's no limitations on this. So no, think, it's a regular horse that's puking on his head. So yeah, that was, <laughs> that was rough. I don't know. Did you know if you rearrange the letters of pale... You can, I mean, it's not spelled the same way, but it can be Alpi. Alpi. Oh, it could be Alpi. Alpi. Oh, is that, wow. Alpi. It's like is, those, that, is that a secret meaning? It's like meaning? the devil when you do the records backwards. No, it's, I'm going to pronounce it Alpi. It's not Alpa. It's Alpa. just, I mean, no, it's literally Alpi. Shut your face. I'm telling you what exactly <laughs> I'm thinking. So. Okay. That's very cool. Yeah. There you go. Is that a hidden meaning? Does that mean something for the book? Or is your daughter just making you're stuff me? up? Yeah. yeah, mom. No, you guys are just you're making up anything. I mean, yeah. fair enough. No, Do you like her accent? Can a... you? Oh, can you yeah, understand I mean... anything she says ever? <laughs> yeah, because I okay. I'm Scottish. Don't you remember okay. Kareem yeah. Nam Fetchum? I don't think that's Didn't how we... you pronounce it, right? Didn't but... we also learn that that's not what that means? Fuck. We are Scottish. No, I thought that's what it meant. It's it's something similar to that. Okay. Okay, so this is another, I'm going to have to explain, um, we have a coat of arms in our family, and the, it's gone, for, you know, we, we're mostly, it came from my England relatives, and it's been passed down, you know, 100 years ago, and we have it, and the on the on there it says Kareem Nam Fetchum, or something like that, and we're fetchum, like, I, I thought it meant something like, you know, kill the bad guys or something, because it's got this sickle and, a, and arrows and all this junk in it, a ship in our um in our coat of arms and we looked it up one time and it just means we are scottish i'm like wow that's that is not <laughs> something i mean that's just not they could have done it better doesn't quite that. strike the fear <laughs> and be you know the enemies know. are <laughs> yeah, that's right <laughs> also yeah. um our coat of arms also has a white flag on it and a broken spear crossed oh yeah um, and a cat and a cat oh and a cat yeah. that's right yeah so um whatever that's supposed to mean um nice the cat's nice the the other stuff is a little i mean hey, we're honest that's what it means it means we don't we're hide our past it means we're fucking scottish <laughs> and we've got cats and we may not always be great at fighting yeah but you know that's right we're still well, around well. so that's the important thing that's right i like that <laughs> uh, all right um we're gonna move on to some listener questions as well. <laughs> so from Sleeping Boy. Beluga, um, they ask, we've seen the Kenneteers question the others and seen some <laughs> dancing around the questions. What question do you think you could ask that as long as everyone answered would have a 100% chance of getting the culprit that they couldn't wiggle out of or claim an exception to? Oh boy, these reader questions. I just have to say, you guys think I'm a lot smarter than I am. And that's really <laughs> sweet. <laughs> 
<laughs> so, no, I can't think of anything. I don't know how to do this. I would just say the question would be, did you kill the Carmine Beast? But I, I'm, I'm sure that is a little too simplistic, right? Hmm. So, yeah. Yeah. It's yeah. That's hard. all I could think of. It's hard. Yeah. yeah. By the way, Mom, every time you say Carmine Beast, um, the way that you say it reminds me of um, How the Grinch Stole Christmas. And every time you say it, I hear the roast beast in my head. <laughs> uh, okay. Yeah, it's real nice. <laughs> you say it, beast. I say it like that? Mm-hmm. There's certain it's words nice that I... Well, how do you say beast? Beast. I don't know. Uh, I feel like, why is it all... we always bring something back to Christmas? <laughs> like, Christmas is great. Yeah, but no, wait, I mean, you're not wrong, but I'm just like, we don't plan that, you know, <laughs> just, just Christmas just comes up anyway. Okay. <laughs> Malia, it's your turn. Or Catholicism. Sorry, I was going to try to quote Dr. Seuss, but it's fine. Okay. I mean, Megafire. You can if you want. <laughs> no, it's fine. It wasn't that exciting. <laughs> okay. Um, Megafire wants to know, in regards to convincing Verona to stay human, what good elements of humanity do you think would be convincing to Verona? Because you even said in this episode, like you can see why she'd want to turn into a ferret with her dad and stuff like that. Like yeah. she, you know, like, so what, what would you talk to Verona about in order to convince her to stay human? Okay. I love this question too. Your, your audience is awesome. <laughs> so uh, I would say I would go for the friendship and loyalty you know, um, she, you know, she, it's good to be a human, you know, the free will is good. You know, how much can ferrets do They're They, they probably don't have thumbs, you know, I don't know. I, I would say that having might, a thumb yeah. is one of them and free will and opportunities to make a difference in the world. I mean, mm. ferret, I don't know how, how much difference they can make, but My it might not be a good ferret. D- oh, okay. But still. I, I think that, oh, here it is. Humans can hold a paintbrush. So there, that might get her. That might do <laughs> it. When she was True. a ferret, could she hold her paintbrushes? I don't know. And that's True. a that's, that's an important terrible. thing to her. I think Verona's interested not only in maybe becoming a ferret, but in becoming like an other. And for instance, like Alpi can hold a paintbrush, right? Like, you know. It depends if you're thinking of her as a horse or not. I Edith can hold a, a paintbrush. Can horses hold paintbrushes? Right. <laughs> okay. Edith, Edith and Mariska can hold paintbrushes, yeah. right? Like what? Goblins can. What? Goblins might can hold paintbrushes. Stick them in places instead, but, you know. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I'll go back to the first thing I said, which is friendship and loyalty. There's the three of them that got in this together. They need each mm-hmm. other, you know, That's and nice. I don't want to guilt her into it, but... You know, it's, you can just say, we need you, you know, we really need you to be a part of this. We love you. And, and I can't imagine doing this, you know, we're all together in this and, and, um, we want to be there for you also, but that we really need you. Mm -hmm. And I, I'd I'd go there with it. Nice. Cause they kind of do. Yeah. All right. Next question. We've got tag eyed, tagged, tag eyed. It's probably one of those. Um, <laughs> they're asking, um, what would you have done in the Paul situation as Lucy or as an outsider, like at the time? Okay, if I was Lucy, I wouldn't have keyed his car. I mean, that's one thing. that That's like putting your fingernails on a chalkboard. I just, I, you know, not only, I just think that's a really low thing to do, but it, yeah, I couldn't stand doing that because of the sound. Um, but I definitely would have confronted him. I would not have let him go. I would have like latched onto latched onto him or, you know, gone. On, I would, or jumped on the roof of the car or something to not let him go. Cause it would have been really important to, um, get some answers. Yeah. Jumped in the car if I had to. And, um, he needs to say it out loud, you know, just don't be like, I, I got to go. I can't tell you. No, he needs to say it. And um, I'd want him to really um, face up to what he did and see what a jerk he was. Hmm. Um, <laughs> Elliot has posted, a. he says, I have a video question and then posts a link. And hopefully I remember to post that link 
Yes. What do you think, Bob? <laughs> Okay, I'm not responsible for Elliot's link, so I'm just telling you guys, don't let the cu- your curiosity get the best of you because it's just not worth it. You want that thing will be stuck in your head for all day. So Elliot, you're awful. So, <laughs> so there, because I couldn't get that out of my head. So don't click on it, you guys. Don't click. <laughs> don't take it personally, Elliot. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Oh, he he knew. Oh, hi. He knew. Yeah. He knew. He knew what he was doing. Yeah. He's messing with us. All right. Next, uh, Waterfall asks, how would you handle raising someone like Lucy, who has such a sense of justice and fairness, but is growing up in an unfair world? Oh, my God. Okay. I just have to say, Waterfall, I did raise one of those. (laughs) I totally did. Absolutely. Yes. She's not the Can lawyer. Can anybody guess? Yeah, she's not the lawyer. She's not the it's lawyer. the other one. <laughs> yep. I, I don't know what else to say. Law school. Or that would have been a yeah. terrible idea. Oh, that would have been brutal. All it's or nothing. Place. Just You get to learn how to argue both sides. Sure, I probably thing. would have rather oh, been a judge born... than... Yeah. Than Jenny's lawyer, born but... knowing how to argue both sides, don't you think? But she never would. She's too... No, she's too... Yeah, she picks the the right side and goes with that. There's no stopping her. I'm not always that confident with arguing with people I don't know very well, though. So I usually act very, like, impartial and try not to ruffle feathers Hmm. around people unless it's like... Yeah, I'm not even talking really about... I mean, you, you are not so much about arguing, but I've never seen any I don't even know where he got this but I've never <laughs> seen anyone with such a sense of justice and fairness I mean down to Dad has a- how do you da- well how do you split the um you know the piece piece of pie and chew, you know all that kind of stuff it's just it has to be you know the you, there's a there's a fair way to do it and an unfair way to do it I mean that's true it's true. Yeah. <laughs> I think dad has a pretty strong sense of fairness. So yeah. he does. What happened What happened to me? <laughs> I just go with the flow more. I bet I, that's not one thing I, I wouldn't describe. I mean, that's just not one of my things. Dad does. Yeah. 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 I mean, not, it's not saying that my sense of justice is correct all the time, but I just have a strong feeling about it. Yeah. And, you know. Which can be good, but, you know, if you find out later that you were wrong about certain things, Hmm. then it's like, well, that's unfortunate. (laughs) (laughs) So have y'all ever had, like, a conversation or, I don't know, have y'all ever had to talk about, hi, Swiffer, have y'all ever had to talk about, like, an unfair situation and whatever? Bye, Mom. (laughs) Like, in general? No, like, like, I think that he's, this question is getting at, like, how do you talk to your daughter? I think this question is kind of getting at, like, how do you talk to your daughter when she has such a strong sense of justice, but the world is, like, inherently unfair in a lot of ways? Mm. Like, what do you do? How do you, how do you talk to her about that? Is that my question? Mm -hmm. I was interrupted (laughs) by dad. Um see that's there's so many hard things to being a parent you know really um that that there isn't an answer to but i really think that admitting some time that that just good communication um Mm. with your kids and admitting that sometimes you don't have the right you don't have the answer and that there are hard things that everyone is going to deal with and maybe having more of a conversation than than um a one-sided conversation where, okay, you need to do this and this and this. I think it might be more helpful to ask, you know, how do you, have you had anything like this happen to you? And how do you feel, what helps you and what doesn't help you? Those kind of things. Mm -hmm. Cause Mm -hmm. I, cause it's hard. I know there's times, it's really funny. I've, I know that there's been a couple of times when you guys did something really, really bad, really rotten. And I didn't even know what to do. And I went into room with you and like sat on the floor with you. And I said, okay, I have no idea how to, what to do with this. You know, how, 
what what should I do? You know, what should your punishment be? What do, what do you think? Why did you do that? Or whatever it was, you know, mm-hmm. and you guys would come up with something way worse than what I would have come <laughs> up with, you know, but it's just, you know, cause I don't, I, it's so, once in a while you're stumped and I really think it's kind of a good thing to, um, you, you, most of the time you should have answers for your kids and all that and have guidance and give them direction. But once in a while it's okay to, um, to just tell them you you're not sure how to handle this you know hmm. that's one of those i feel like i remember some of those times but do you yeah yeah not in a bad way or anything but yeah i'm just in a way yeah. it's kind of nice because it's like bringing us into the discussion um in terms of like yeah realize you know making you realize that there are consequences but yet to be like hey like you need to think about you know, what you did and why it was wrong and, you know, more yeah, accountability. I think it's a, I think it's a little bit different than a lot of parents do, mm-hmm. but it just always, um, you know, if occasionally it made sense to me to do that, just yeah. pull you in and ask you how to handle it. And of course, the one thing I didn't say is, you know, talking about, you know, bad people and different things, you always would give your, um, you want to leave your kids with a sense of, um, their value and their worth and that their mm-hmm. strength and things like that, because, um, you know, everybody's different, but you guys, you know, you definitely have your real, your really good, st- strong points and everything. And I think it's, um, when you do go through a tough time, it's good to have a conversation and, and make sure that you can grasp onto some of that, you know, to give you some hope and courage and all that. Yeah. That's nice, mom. Mm, thanks. <laughs> yeah. Okay. So now we're going to transition into more wisdom slash your three things. Um, so we're asking mom to tell us three things um, that she has as like takeaways or whatever from the set of chapters. So. Okay. And number one. The first one. <laughs> yeah. Number one, giving birth to rats. I mean, Honestly, that's disgusting. I don't remember the context for this at all. I I don't either, but it's right at the beginning of whatever you gave me. Oh, it was in one of those, it was one of those caves or whatever the wisdom thing, the, the fairies have those little, um, all those little places. Mm -hmm. What are those called? It was in the very beginning. Um, (laughs) They were talking there about like fairy a fairy caves, fairy caves or something. Oh, in the courts. Yeah. The courts. Mm-hmm. So in one of the courts, court of dark fall, um, mm-hmm. court of the wretched so that they can bear their curse. And one of them was giving birth to rats. And so Damn. that I couldn't let that go. Cause that was just, <laughs> nobody should put that in a book. <laughs> it just shouldn't be there because it's the same as you know it, it's yeah it's not, it's like Elliot's Elliot's thing that I clicked on it won't go away in my head <laughs> you know so at um, least it wasn't a video of like rats and like and the song and all that at the same yeah, time yeah that's right? true and then and then you know you have these weird dreams when you're pregnant I don't know mm-hmm. if Jenny has but I I had a couple I just remember um, giving birth to weird things, you know, like, um, <laughs> weird things. Puppies, puppies on the stairs. On the, they were always on the stairs. One time it was roses, long stem roses. That sounds really painful, but yeah. It, and, and then Ouch. one was hot dogs. Sorry about the hot dog thing. But <laughs> it took the hot, <laughs> yeah, dog, so to I, hot dog buns. <laughs> so it was just i would have these birth these dreams jenny have you ever ever had a pregnancy dream tonight might be yeah i just uh, i have i just tend to have like vivid really vivid weird dreams um trying to remember like i feel like i have had one where i was in labor or giving gave birth before but i don't remember it wasn't quite as like (laughs) I guess formulaic almost is <laughs> your sound. Um, but I know I have. But just, I guess yours stick out more. Okay. Mom, did the roses, did the rose part come out first or the stem part? Really? 
Darn. Were I, they breach? I, that's not something that, were they breach? Yeah. <laughs> uh, let me think about that. Yeah, no, I, I'm sorry. I, I don't, I don't know the answer to that. I don't want to make anything up here. We're sticking okay. to real things. Well, okay, take... let me keep going because I know. Yes, number two. I know I have to get out of here. Okay, um, number two is Verona's dad is the worst. That's my number two. Correct. And number three is Avery's family is crazy. Those guys are crazy. The car? Can yeah. you imagine being in a car with those people? It's bad enough watching oh, watching TV with them arguing over that stuff. Ugh. But being in a car, I, I could I would absolutely walk home every time. <laughs> yeah. yeah. No, it's they were they're they're nuts. Yeah. And I think yeah. in one of the chapters in the beginning, Avery's like biking to school. She seems to try to like be away from her family as much as she yeah. can. Makes sense. Yeah, makes sense. It's kind of insane. What yeah. would you do to try to manage that? Not only that amount of kids, but like it seems like a lot of them are very chaotic for attention or something. Maybe what would you what would you do? Um, probably make them play outside. That's the old <laughs> kick them all out. I mean, that's my <laughs> that first is what thing. you would do. It's like okay. <laughs> Everybody out. <laughs> yeah, I'm having a glass of wine. I'll, I'll, call you when it's, I'll call you when it's time to come in. I mean, I don't know. It's kind of like, yeah, don't. And, and the car. Ugh. I, I mean, I think you kind of see in their family, it's developed into that's the way it is. You know, it's a mm-hmm. rut already. That's the way mm. the norm is. And I think you have to catch it before. Um, somehow Get before stuck. that becomes, you know, change seats around all the time and stuff like that. And the one who's the biggest pain, make him sit between you and tell him, make him tell you three things or make him um, spell, you know, do he, he can, you can give him spelling words or something. I don't know, something to engage him, but so that he's not picking on the other people in the car, you know, mm. um, you know, and then after he gets, you know, you could do, I don't know, you could just use your imagination. You could change it up. And um, the kids who's the quiet, quietest gets um, the two scoops of ice cream instead of one. Man, they'd all be so quiet. I don't know. That's probably a really bad one. That could backfire on you. Yeah. <laughs> it could, but it'd be tempting. Yeah. <laughs> all right. Well, now we're coming up to mom's book recommendation and just skimming over this. It looks uh, like it's going to live up to the other ones. So, <laughs> <laughs> Really? Okay. Now, I actually really like this book. This is a really great book. It's a book. No, I'm serious. You guys should read this book. It's really, really good. And there was a movie, too. And I, don't, I probably read the book first and then saw them. It was a, on TV. I'm trying to some remember kind of if movie. I actually read this, actually. It's really good. But it's called Homecoming. And it was by Cynthia Voigt. And um, basically, it's a story where the mom leaves her kids at a mall, and their father had left them a long time ago. Um, so the 13-year-old has to take care of them, feed them, find them places to sleep, and they're kind of um, headed towards this distant grandmother's home, I think. And she had mm. to avoid the police whenever they'd see some kind of, you know, police car come by they you know jump in the bushes or something because they didn't want to be split up they didn't want to be put in foster homes and split up she was really trying to keep them as a unit and um she was hope hoping to find someone to take care of them um but is afraid to trust anyone so hmm. it's a really good book though it was you it know, was really interesting I, yeah i think i'm pretty sure i read this book and i forgot about it entirely really? yeah yeah it, it What's actually your impression it, it was really your, good like, yeah, it, sounds it was really good. Oh, um, Malia, come on. You think this book isn't depressing? Yeah. I mean, she's got a point. <laughs> I mean, come no, on, Malia. Th- th- yeah, whenever Real I come life up, is it's worse, like, mom. oh, the dog died. I'm like, Malia, this book, they're eating, you're eating your friend's eyeballs, okay? Like, she and didn't people, recommend she the child called use it. that eyeball anyway, mom. But still it's the book's not over so um no but homecoming is i'll vouch for that because i remember it being really yeah, really it was good. A good book oh good good all right um now we're going to remind you all about the giveaway Woo-hoo. um our mom makes cool cards by hand with her m- amazing talent and stamps and she wants to make you a card mm-hmm. so that yes. you can either put it on your little shelf or send it 
to someone you love and get them to read pale. Um, so to enter the giveaway and potentially win one of our mom's handmade cards, um, you can either comment on the Reddit post for this episode, or you can tweet at pale comparison with the hashtag our mom critiques wild bow. And we'll put all the names in a random drawing and we will send one to the winner. Um, yeah, they've been really cool cards so far. Um, I've really loved seeing them. And so this is really fun. And you could, mm-hmm. you know, you could have get one. one of these. Yeah. Yay. Oh, it's thanks, Malia. Sweet. And I've started putting them. Um, I just sent a couple, but I've started putting them on my um, blog. <laughs> trying to think what it's called on my blog and I'm going to do um, you'd be able to go in the search bar and um, type pale and they'll come up. But I, cool. before I, um, before I go, I wanted to say your readers are so amazing. You guys, I want to see if you'll come up with a card challenge for me. Okay. Ooh, so out of challenge. the chapter. Yeah. A card challenge, you know, like um, it, don't give me, don't give me monkeys eating somebody's arm, but, but I, could, I, I did, you know, but, but I did, I did, um, the cat, Verona was, um, the cat was mowing the lawn. That's the latest. And then what else that that's pretty good. Yeah. So there's different things. So I, I'll, I'll take a card challenge and, and see what I can do. But anyway, thanks everyone for listening. If you enjoyed this episode and you'd like to help support the podcast, please subscribe, share it with your friends and leave a rating and review. If you'd like to support Wild Bow, go to patreon.com slash wild And if you want to support me, check out my blog at www.createwithcheryl.me. You can also check out Pale in Comparison, a podcast where Malia uses her knowledge of Pale to guess what happens in Pact, one of Wild Bow's other web, serial, web serials, and I try to not give anything away. In addition, check out all the other great shows in the Doof Network and support us at patreon.com slash doofmedia. You can follow us on Twitter at Pale Comparison or send us an email at paleincomparisonpod at gmail.com. Also, be on the lookout for that Reddit post where you can share your thoughts on this episode and enter the giveaway. All right. Bye, everybody. Bye. Bye.